to me, my boy. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 animated Marvel shows. Hey guys, don't cut me out of this. This is the adventure of a lifetime. For this list, we'll be looking at the best animated series to come from the House of Ideas. Which is your favorite animated Marvel show? Let us know in the comments. Number 10, MODOK. It can be hard to keep track of every Marvel property these days, especially if it's a show not set in the MCU. You binge-watching The Great British Bake Off in your helmet while we fight? No, I'm savoring The Great British Bake Off, making it last. No more than two episodes a day. Three tops. But anyone who tuned into Hulu's take on the mental organism designed only for killing found a great comedy. The series follows the villain after his evil organization files for bankruptcy, after his marriage begins to crumble. The thing you need to know about me and your mom is... She's lost. She's lost her mind. She's lost her way. You have to stop Murdoch, her! Murdoch, what are you telling the kids? I'm comforting them! And if you tell her I said any of this, this will be one of the many divorces where it is the kid's fault. Patton Oswalt shines as the voice of Modoc, perfectly nailing the tone of the offbeat character. Other standout cast members include Ben Schwartz and Melissa Fumero as Modoc's children. Melissa, stop looking at your phone. You're embarrassing me! Why couldn't you just take us straight to school? I'm having a great time, Dad. I can't wait for your funeral. There's a good attitude. It definitely leans towards comedic trappings rather than super heroics. With the same studio behind Robot Chicken's stop motion animation, it's a quirky inclusion in Marvel's repertoire. Number 9. Ultimate Spider-Man This Disney XD series follows Peter Parker one year after becoming Spider-Man, still learning how to carry his burden. You super spies making a point to sneak up on hard-working heroes? Kid. We gotta talk. While we've seen Peter in that state multiple times, Ultimate brought enough new to help it stand out. Through S.H.I.E.L.D., Peter learned to be on a team with other teenage heroes like Luke Cage and Iron Fist. Wait, that was Doctor Strange. We're astral plane neighbors. He comes by to borrow sugar. And the show did a great job at bringing in Spidey's rogues in a new setup, particularly the final season's Sinister Six lineup. You once brought down the Sinister Six almost entirely by yourself. But do you know what's going to defeat you now? A locked door. The cast was made up of superhero royalty, including Greg Sipes, Tara Strong, and J.K. Simmons, once again as J. Jonah Jameson. It is the opinion of Daily Bugle Communications that the police should issue a warrant for Spider-Man's arrest. It came from the studio behind Ben 10, so there was plenty of excitement for kids to enjoy. Number 8. Guardians of the Galaxy with the 2014 film, writer and director James Gunn turned a team most had never heard of into one of Marvel's hottest properties. So, I'm totally sold on Guardians of the Galaxy as our name. Now we need a battle cry. Suggestions? I am Groot. Walked right into that one. A year later, Disney released a series exploring further misadventures of the team that we would have been grateful to have as kids. Are you trying to get us locked up? I cannot lie. It is dishonorable. It's called acting. You mean like a performance? When I competed in the galactic combat arena, I used to play the role of a bloodthirsty, relentless barbarian. Used to. The three-season run saw the group come into contact with traditional space characters like Thanos, the Collector, and Yondu's Ravagers. Though, we also got frequent crossovers with other Disney XD shows. Put down the rock and your weapons and we can discuss this. Yeah, we could do that. Or we could just leave with what we came for! Raid, we can't let you do that. It was a lot of fun venturing through space with Marvel characters who had just been introduced into the mainstream. Every cast member nailed their characters, with Rill Friedel as Peter Quill being a particular standout. Number 7. X-Men Evolution While it didn't reach the heights of the beloved 90s series, X-Men Evolution sought to explore the team in a new way. I was just telling Kurt how I set up this institute for gifted youngsters. Youngsters whose gifts are not always an asset. Right, Scott? Uh, so you heard about last night. 
difficult not to. Set in the modern day, it changed many of its characters into teenagers. That way, we got to see the incredible powers we already loved in the hands of those still dealing with a world that shuns them. You can't stop the juggernaut or give me for trying, bam, bam. Though that may have annoyed some die-hard fans, it allowed for kids to better connect to the characters. This characterization worked better for some than others. It took Nightcrawler, Rogue, and Cyclops in interesting directions. Professor, I think this is a mistake. I know Lance, he wouldn't do this unless he wanted something. Yes, I agree. What he wants is to be near Kitty. Plus, the series still showcased the awesome battles we had always come to expect from the team. Number 6. What If The MCU is an incredible franchise stuffed with larger-than-life characters, but this animated series asks what if things went differently. But in another universe, a single choice created a whole new hero. From Peggy Carter taking up Cap's mantle, to Thor as a selfish only child, to a zombie apocalypse, What If brought interesting takes on our favorite heroes. New York, home of the Mets, the Chrysler Building, those ladies from Sex in the City, and now the zombie apocalypse! If you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. But first, you have to not get eaten. Most actors returned to reprise their big screen roles, making it feel more connected to the live action universe, and the cell shaded animation made for some fantastic fights. However, despite its premise, the series showed a larger connection to the grander story. You kidnapped us from across the galaxy so we could. what? Save the universe? Mm, not exactly. Bit more complicated than that. You aren't just our best hope to save one universe, you are my last hope to save. All of them. The multiverse has received an increasingly larger focus in the movies. It was great having the concept introduced in a visually unique way. Number 5. Wolverine and the X-Men just because it didn't last long doesn't mean this X-Men adaptation wasn't great. The series is set one year after an explosion destroyed Professor X's school and left the team disbanded. <laughs> It follows Wolverine as he attempts to bring the team back together amidst further mutant prejudice. It was an engaging look at the team, broken by tragedy as well as Wolverine, who had to step into the leader role. Make this easy on yourself. Surrender. That's funny. I was just about to tell you the same thing, bub. Steve Bloom, having voiced the character many times before and after, showed again he's a pitch-perfect Logan. The series had plenty of twists and wonderful character moments. What are you doing? I'm trying to help you! I remember the last time you helped us, Rogue. That didn't work out so well. Sadly, Disney's purchase of Marvel Studios in 2009 led to financial problems with Marvel's financing partner, ultimately leading to its cancellation. Number 4. The Spectacular Spider-Man First premiering on the kids' WB block on the CW, this iteration of the wall crawler is one of the best TV adaptations fans have gotten. Oh no, not again! Yep, again. <laughs> what is this, Marco, like the third time this summer? It covered the usual ground. Newly bitten Peter Parker must juggle his superhero life with his private one. But it was the way in which it navigated familiar territory that made it such a hit with fans. It didn't shy away from more mature topics, but it was still a bright, explosive superhero spectacle. The way in which it showcased villains was also fantastic, particularly the show's version of Green Goblin, another dynamite performance from Steve Bloom. What's wrong, Spider-Man? Off your game! <laughs> Game's good, Gobs. Just getting acquainted with the rules. Rule one! Spidey must splat! It may have surpassed every animated Spider-Man outing had it not been cancelled due to legal problems between Disney and Sony. Number 3. The Avengers – Earth's Mightiest Heroes while the Avengers were still gearing up for their big screen team up, the animated series already had them working together. So, how's your day been? Painful! I don't think it's over yet. 
It began with 75 supervillains escaping from prison around the world. Initially beginning with the first comics lineup, the team saw other heroes like Black Panther and Hawkeye join the ranks to bring the villains to justice. Good to see you, Clint. Yeah, I bet. The three of us had already snuck halfway to the palace when you guys set off the alarm. Way to ruin it. Perhaps we should win this fight before starting another. The animation was magnificent, drawing viewers in almost immediately and rivaling the highest caliber found in DC's animated portfolio. It served as a stellar introduction to viewers unfamiliar with the grander Marvel Universe and came at the perfect moment. Okay, we've got trouble, and I don't think it's the tunnel collapsing. I've got a kind of sense about these things. It's all around us. Unfortunately, it was another Marvel show cancelled before its time. This time, it was to make room for Avengers Assemble, which more resembles the MCU's version of the team. Number 2. Spider-Man while Spider-Man had appeared in animated adaptations before, none of them quite captured the character the way this 90s series did. Hang loose, Brock. That webbing will melt in a couple of hours. You can't do this! I already have. And many adaptations owe this show a debt of gratitude. Peter Parker is one of Marvel's more relatable heroes, and this series did a spectacular job at showing how vital both sides of his life were. As long as I'm Spider-Man, our happiness will be compromised. Maybe it's time for me to give up web-slinging. Ah, uh, who am I kidding? It's not something I can part with that easily. It also brought to life much of his rogues gallery in thrilling, bite-sized chunks for kids to obsess over. From classic villain origins to the more out-there clone saga, the series was a joyful Saturday morning cartoon version of the hero's most famous storylines. How oh, I despise you! And for that reason, you must be obliterated. You see, I'm really, really hate clones. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. X-Men the best animated Marvel show and one of the best superhero shows, period. Professor Xavier is our leader, and he has named us the X-Men. Don't worry, you are safe here. The X-Men quickly became Marvel's coolest team with their own animated series. The flashy costumes, the awesome and unique powers, the varied characters. If you hadn't read the comics, watching X-Men was an awakening of how mind-blowing superheroes could be. Wolverine! It's me! Don't! Come on! Stop! Stop it! Wolverine! Killing him won't answer any of my questions. And just like its comics, the show dealt with some heavy themes for kids. It is to Marvel what Batman the Animated Series is for DC. Its cast knocks it out of the park, and its superb animation still holds up today. And let's not forget about its awesome theme song. X-Men 97 has a lot to live up to. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.